Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm here to tell you a great story written by the European Union and our company in a large island of the Western Indian Ocean called Madagascar. It's a story about the transformation of a textile factory named Cotona that we have turned into a regional champion with the financial support of the EU through the European Bank of Investment. This transformation took place through several forms of economic integration, in particular vertical and horizontal industrial integration, integration into world markets through marketing and product policies, and lastly, integration in our human and natural environment. That's the story I want to share with you today. I'll be focusing on how we build up our international competitiveness in one of the largest and most competitive markets on our planet. But first, I would like to point out that we were at our beginnings in the aftermath of Madagascar's independence in 1962, a vertically integrated textile complex from the cultivation of cotton to the production of fabrics sold by the meter on our domestic market. At the end of the 70s, we held a 60% share of this market. But two vital events changed the, co the course of our history. First, our company was nationalized in 1976. And second, we lost our entire domestic market after we were privatized again in 1989. This was because the market was flooded by used garments and end-of-series fabrics smuggled from all over the world. This is when our three local competitors filed for bankruptcy. But for us, there was no question of giving up or leaving our employees to their fate as a multitude of them had served our business from father to son. At that time, we were lucky to meet Mr. Claude Chesson, who was then the EU's Commissioner for Development. He, had, he advised us on setting up a legal framework to allow the Malagasy state to take the majority control of Cotona, keeping, keeping us as a minority private partner under an agreement aimed at retaining the private management of the company. I will come back to this essential point in more details later on, if we still have time. The experience of Asia has taught us that in view of a domestic market with low purchasing power, export was initially the only way to recreate value and jobs. We thus decided to take up the challenge of integration on world markets, carrying high the image of made in Madagascar textile products. At the same time, we diversified our activities to become what we are today, that is to say a multi-industry organization present in three countries with four core businesses. In France, we have become the number one retailer of seafood and freshwater products. In Mauritius, we are doing our first steps in the research and development of biotechnologies, focusing on the needs of the pharma and cosmetic industries. And of course, in Madagascar, where our group was born and is embedded for almost a, a century, and where we are active in the textile and clothing industry, organic shrimp farming, and agriculture. We employ locally around 8,000 people. Knowing that in our profession, one direct job generates one indirect one, and the salary in Madagascar feeds five to six months and sometimes more, we can estimate that our activity has an, an impact on the lives of more than 100,000 people. To meet this challenge, we have relied on the trade agreements and our LDC status, which gives to Malagashi products quota-free and duty-free access to major markets around the world. These are mainly the SADC, the EU, the USA, but also China, where our sales are growing. 
Our redeployment plan was inspired by a long-term vision. It, it involved, on the one hand, the addition of a clothing manufacturing unit downstream of our production line, and on the other hand, the acquisition of marketing and design know-how, thanks to a branch office that we have set up in Paris, Paris, which, as we all know, is one of the world's foremost centers of fashion apparel. But with the breakthrough of Asian countries on the export markets, after the dismantling of the multi-fiber agreement and China's accession to the World Trade Organization in 2001, we realized that we needed to position ourselves on mid-range market segments with differentiated products. To this end, we had to set up a customer service able to meet the requirements of big names in the world distribution. So we got to work producing a, pro a beyond reproach customer service with a level of excellence that cannot easily be imitated. The objective was to make this a determining factor of our competitiveness with the aim of continuously enriching it with new improvements and new ideas to make our customers' lives easier. This objective, which was part of our vertical integration strategy, allowed Cotona to become a supplier of turnkey products, ODM, or original design manufacturing, as opposed to outsourcing work. We would not have achieved this ambition if our employees were, had not been aligned to customer satisfaction and motivated to give the best of them at all times. The, this motiv motivation was already present thanks to a rich heritage of values and a resilience that is part of our DNA. These values had not been formalized and in order to take into account the opinions of our entire personnel, we undertook a broad consultation of all the company's 4,000 executives and employees we had at that time to develop a charter of values set in stone, which has become, so to speak, our ethical compass. Actually, we were inspired by certain Asian countries such as Japan and South Korea, where collective motivation gave them a strong asset in their international competitiveness and the driver of success of their economic expansion. This charter highlights fundamental human values such as integrity, transparency, advancement based on merit, accountability, and our commitment regarding the alignment of our decisions with the general interest and respect for the law, respect for our human environment, respect of, for our natural environment, especially when it comes to reducing our carbon footprint and treating and recycling of our used waters, respect for our human diversity and the sort of wealth to be found in it, openness, curiosity, and commitment to progress as a guarantee of our sustainability, and the heart of, at the heart of all these commitments, the satisfaction of our customers as the reason of being of our company. Our policy of development of, of our human capital stems from this charter, insofar as we are attentive to our working conditions and job safety, which are in line with the highest standard of our profession. We take care of the health of our employees and their families with free health care and medical center at a medical center that is often cited as a reference. We are attentive to their meals, which are served in quality catering areas. We also make sure they receive training and improve their skills ongoingly in our in-house training center and that they progress all along their career path. But the actions we have to undertaken to reinforce their sense of belonging and their motivation would not be sufficient if we didn't also take care of the human communities around us from which the great majority of them come from. We do this 
through community projects aimed at helping the most deprived ones among them. For example, we recently implemented a surgery project with, with Mercy Ships, which changed the lives of 150 disabled people in the city of Antsirabe. I also mentioned our project of introducing our 8,000 employees' children to computer science and to French and English languages. This is the social bond and the sense of living together of which the French sociologist Émile Durkheim wrote about. But we also wish to position Cotona as an actor for progress and development within its own country. The results of this human investment are clearly visible as in 2016 we recorded our sixth consecutive year of double-digit growth. Cotona is also working on, its, on doubling its production capacity by 2020. By then, our workforce will reach around 10,000 people and led by a woman as the CEO, we will have become a member of the club, club of major international companies in our sector. Ladies and gentlemen, of all these forms of integration through which our group has reinvented itself, you have surely noticed that what has made the biggest difference is our integration in our human environment. This is not surprising because it concerns the lives of, of women and men at work and the meaning that they want to give to their very existence. But it's also about development, a development which makes sense in a country such as ours only if the business community contributes to improving the lives of the poorest among us. That is why it seems to me that our example illustrates the EU's vision for development aid which inspired the Lomé Convention in 1975, the Cotonou Convention in 2000, and currently the Economic Partnership Agreements, EPA, whose ultimate objective is to promote the growth of ACP countries through inclusive, inclusive and responsible economic integration. It is this message of deep appreciation and gratitude towards the EU that I wanted to witness in front of you today. Thank you for your kind attention.